So we're going to describe these two uh, functions, an and at. So this is what we're going to be looking at right here. So I'll rewrite all this stuff. <clears throat> and then I'll give you a much better form that uh, hopefully will be a little less confusing. So our acceleration at a point T is a scalar function of t times the unit tangent vector. So <clears throat> this is a unit vector, and then we'll scale it by that scalar function right next to it. And then we will have another scalar function that scales our normalized acceleration, which is n. And when you add these two together, you'll get the full acceleration. So if we think about our particle moving, there is some forward direction and a normal component. Now these are not the acceleration and the velocity. The, remember the t is the normalized velocity. So what it won't show you is speeding up and slowing down. So it won't show you how much this particle is changing speeds, basically. So I talked before quite a bit about if this particle is slowing down, your actual acceleration is going to be partially against your velocity if it's slowing down. So acceleration is not always perpendicular to your velocity. It's only true if your speed is constant. So these two vectors right here represent the direction of travel and not quite the direction of acceleration, but if we're moving at a constant speed, this would be our acceleration. So one way to think about uh, n is basically the direction you're turning in. So in this case, we're, well, depending on how the orientation is, we're basically turning to the left in this situation. So the full acceleration has a little bit in the t direction and a little bit in the n direction. And this is how much in each of those two directions. So we'll write down what the at and the an function are. And these are functions of t. So at of t is the derivative now, to be careful, it's a derivative of the magnitude of the velocity, not the derivative of the velocity. So the order is super important. I'm not 100% sure, but I do not think this is the same as the take the derivative and then get the magnitude. So I don't think it is the same thing. So be careful with that. The order is important. So that's a t and then a n of t is kappa times magnitude velocity squared. And the names of these, there's a tangential component, which is a t. And then the uh, end component is called the normal component. And this just means tangential, meaning in the direction you're moving, and normal, meaning the orthogonal direction to that. Or if you think about this as a plane, that would be the normal to the plane. So we're going to solve for a n in this, and then all right, let's find the magnitude of this equation at top. So I'll rewrite the equation, then we'll take the magnitude of it.
And if you make sure you write your subscript small and your like big T and big N big, you shouldn't necessarily have to wrap everything in extra parentheses if you can just be careful how you write. If you can't be careful how you write or if things are confusing, then just keep one of them in parentheses. So you know it's multiplication, not some function composition. There's multiplication here. And it would be incorrect. What well, would be misleading if I put a dot right there? Dot product. You'd be thinking of dot product, which is a scalar times a vector. So this is a scalar function times a vector. It doesn't make any sense to have a dot right there. So it's just regular scalar multiplication. Now we're going to find the magnitude. So let's think about what's actually happening here. There is some acceleration. Uh, we'll go back to our curve and look here. So acceleration is green. All right, so let's say uh, we're speeding up. And so we're speeding up, so the actual acceleration is going to be uh, going with t a little bit, but we're obviously turning as well. So maybe our actual acceleration looks something like this, right there. I want to think about how a, magnitude of a, relates to these other two. Let's get crazy and do a much bigger acceleration, like we're flooring it through the turn. So there are two components to this. There's the T direction and the N direction. It's not a good weather day to floor it through a turn. No. <laughs> Certainly not this morning. Uh, so we have a, a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration. So there is an acceleration in both of these two directions. So here's one component, and this one is ATT. Is the AT both subscripts? Nope. Just the T? Just the first T is the subscript. It's the same ATT as before. And then up here we got ANN. So A sub N times big N. So basically it's just scaling in the two different directions. Now I want to compare the magnitudes of these three green vectors. And I'm going to do something that will make this a lot easier. I'm going to redraw A going this direction. All I care about is the magnitude right now. So I don't care what direction it points. I want to compare magnitudes. How can we relate these three vectors? You can ignore the original A. Pythagorean theorem. Oh, very good. We got, now this relied on that right angle. If we didn't have a right angle, I would have to do something else. And certainly Pythagorean theorem would not be very good. It would not be applicable here. So because we have uh, perpendicular right here, not per yeah, perpendicular, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and I'll write that out. And let me get the original A back there. So we have the length of that side squared plus the length of this side squared. squared equals the length of the hypotenuse squared. So I just have h squared, hypotenuse squared, which is regular a, and then I have the other two sides are up there in the green, ann and att. Now we're doing side length, that's why I put magnitude on each of these. So any geometry questions before we get to algebra? So now we're going to look at some algebra here. Uh, we have a scalar times a vector magnitude. So it's absolute value of the scalar times the magnitude of the vector. And we're going to be squaring these. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Absolute value of the a n scalar times the magnitude of the n vector. Still squaring that. 
what are the magnitudes of the vectors t and n? So what does a vector t represent? I've only said it probably eight times. It's the unit vector, so one. It's the unit vector. It's the unit vector in the direction we're traveling, <laughs> but the property I need now is unit. So what does that mean here? T is a unit vector. One. So it's one, so I can cancel it out. So that's one right there. So multiply it by anything you get. A T. Same thing. N points a different direction, but N is also unit. So magnitude N is also one. So I'm crossing them out because they're unit vectors. So that meant their magnitudes were both one. And we just get a t squared plus a n squared equals a squared. And depending on what you need, uh, if you maybe you know two of them, you want the third, uh, we'll just go ahead and solve for the a n. So it's easy to do. a n is magnitude a squared minus magnitude a t squared, and then we'll just square root. And we're going to be squaring them so that we don't need this uh, absolute value because these are just scalar functions. So we're going to be squaring them. So they're going to forced, be forced to be positive. Now it's a little bit tricky. How do I know a n is a positive? So I don't need the absolute value signs here because a n is positive. Oh, we may not have any ex acceleration, so we may be going a completely straight path. So a n may be zero, but how do I know it won't be negative? Let's think about what's going on here. So, well, if we were going backwards, that would, um, t would, a t would be negative. Yeah. So, t is the velocity component, n is the radial or the turning component, it's the acceleration. Why, the reason that it would have been negative is because it turns to the left, it would be turning to the right, then the n would be uh, orthogonal to the other side. That's exactly right. If it was going to point the other direction, this picture would look very different, n would point so if we were turning the other way, I probably should just redraw a curve, but if we were actually turning the other direction, it's no problem, but n would point always to the middle. So that's why the least you could be going into a turn is not turning. So that would be the zero. And so if you're going, you, I guess if you really wanted to, you could point the wrong direction and say I'm turning negative this direction, but um, we're just gonna point to the inside of the turn and we're turning that way. So. The least we could be turning is zero that way. So that's why we can assume that an's not going to ever be negative. OK, so now we can write an in terms of those two, uh, the a and the at squared. So let's find the acceleration. We'll just do a two-dimensional problem. So our path, this one will be a little more tricky than some of the ones we've seen before. So our x component is going to be cos t plus t sine t. That's our i component. J component is similar going to be sine t minus t cos t j. Don't have. You can have, put whatever hat you want. Beanie, sombrero, 
<laughs> Bandana, whatever. All right, so here's our function, our path. Uh, t is going to be greater than zero. I want to know. I want you to find a, but find it with a t, t and a n n. So I'll write down. So this is what we want at the end. But in order to get there, obviously we have a lot of things to compute. So I'll write down everything or at least hopefully everything we'll be using. So V is R prime of T. Uh, you probably need to find the magnitude of that. And then T is V over magnitude V. A little t. We wrote this down just a few minutes ago, but it's the T derivative of the magnitude of the velocity. Regular A is actually the easy thing to compute d over dt of v, it's just the derivative velocity. Uh, magnitude a, just the magnitude of that. And last, a n, square root magnitude a squared minus, and I don't need absolute value, so we can Take those out. Those are scalars, so you're going to get a positive uh, out of those two functions. Whoa, a is not a scalar. Acceleration is a, in this case, it would be a two-dimensional vector. So a definitely needs its magnitude. I think I erased it before too. So I'm going to go back to here. I have to take the magnitude of a because a is not a scalar. A is a vector. There's our an. I don't know if I circled the a equals this component breakdown, so I'll put a box around that. All right, so compute all these. I think I wrote them in the right order, so you should be able to just go top to bottom, compute them in like that. And if you're writing out your cheat sheet, order can help you out. If things are in certain orders, you'll compute this, then that, then that, then that. So, if this is a good order to write them down, it's a good order probably to put them on your cheat sheet. So I'll give you about three minutes to do these. You do have product rule, don't forget. There is a T cos T and a T sine T, so there is product rule happening. Don't forget about it. And there should hopefully be some serious trig identities, like cos squared plus sine squared. So that a Yeah, that is that. Because that's a vector and that's a scalar. So I don't, that's going to be forced to be positive, but you can't square a vector.
when you find the magnitude, you'll be looking at hopefully some trig identities. Yep. Cool. It's just a placeholder. This well, is the x coordinate, that's the y coordinate. Yeah, so t sine t, that first t is that uh, constant? No. That's our variable. So there's a product rule here, and there's a product rule here. Thanks. You can erase all the t's and put x's in if you want. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what you use. S is not the best letter because it looks like a 5 for most people. Unless your S distinctly doesn't look like a 5, I would avoid S as a variable. So at this point in calculus, you probably have seen the magnitude of the cos uh, t sine t vector enough to know that it's always going to be a unit. You can, of course, write the magnitude out if you want to, but it turns into cos squared plus sine squared. But at this point, you can probably, if you've done enough of these problems, just say that that magnitude is going to be 1 inside. So I'm just going to use the property where I could bring scalars outside. And then I know that last vector is magnitude 1. Let's assume t is greater than zero, so I don't have to keep this absolute value around forever. So let's we'll assume time is starting at zero and going forward. Now I'm doing all my, basically I'm factoring out t. You can absolutely leave this uh, multiple t inside your vector. Either way, you're going to be doing the product rule. So I'm doing the scalar times a vector product rule, or the scalar product rule. You could do the product rule on the inside if you want to. But you're basically doing the same amount of work. And you should get to the same uh, result.
No, did I not compute AN? Oh, that was because I was supposed to use, yeah, the thing I just erased. <laughs> write down N either. Oh man, does anybody have N written down in a nice form? The how to compute N? Just T over magnitude T? Is that? Yeah, but then I need K, so we... And it's T prime over magnitude T prime. And that means I need T prime. And magnitude will be one. So our regular sine cosine. T N is negative sine T cos T. All right, and our original A, I'll write that on the left. I'm picking the original A up out of here, not the one that uh, we could compute A just by looking here. Basically, combine those, add those two vectors together. That's one version of A. But I'm taking A, the computed A that we had up there which was cos t minus t sine t comma sine t plus t cos t now are these the same Better be the same. So we got our, let's see, what would that, that would be? The tangential component right there. And then the normal component is the second part right there. So you basically see them both show up. All right, so that is how to break down uh, motion into acceleration and uh, velocity components. I lost what place we were at. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is uh, B. What in the world was B? So that was the end of that last example right there. We just computed the acceleration. So what do you remember about B? It was a T and B frame. It was, <coughs> so it was a perpendicular or orthogonal to the T and the N. So if we jump back up to what we drew, basically B tells us how much we're either going out of the board or into the board. So in two dimensions, there is no B. Right? You're always on the plane, so you're not going out or going into the board. In three dimensions, however, your curve could locally be written on a flat piece of paper if you don't go very far, but then of course it's going to start either leaving uh, by going up or out or going back in. Uh, so B tells you how much that's happening. So that's what B is. Uh, how does B change? So what's one way to figure that out? How does B change? So 
derivative. So if I want to know how much something changes, you take derivative. So b is some vector. If I want to know what's, uh, how is it changing, just take derivative. Uh, we are going to take, <coughs> we could take a t derivative, uh, but we want to know uh, how much it changes when it's normalized. That would be the net change, oh, okay. not, uh, like if you count your uh, path from your house to class back to your house, your net change would be zero, because you start and end at the same place, yeah. unless you happen to move that day or something like that, <laughs> but, but you're generally starting and ending at the same place, okay. um, whereas if your, your cardometer would probably not say zero, yeah. okay. so that would be final minus initial may not be the amount of change you actually want. So you might need like a third point if you're going that route or something like that? Well, even with a third point, if you did that, you're going to get those straight line distances. Your actual curve to get here probably looks something, I don't know why it's not erasing, uh, maybe looks something, that you're probably doubling back on the track you want. It's going to look something more like that. So you need to actually go and figure out your arc length. You can't just go final minus initial. That will give you the straight line distance. And even if you doubled that, it's still not going to be, I mean, unless you literally live straight down one of these streets um, and make no turns, there's a few people who might be able to compute their distance like that. But most people have to make at least one turn to get here. So I want to know how it changes in a normalized way. So with unit speed, so that's where we have the s variable, dv over ds. And one way to write it is negative tau n. And so what in the world is this tau? So this tau is called torsion. And there's a way to compute it. So it's negative dB over dS dot product with N. However, that would require computing dB over dS. Not a T derivative, but a S derivative. So there's a, another way to compute it. And I'll write it out here. And for most of you, this will not be new notation. I'll explain the dots. They're just freckles for now. Dots become silly. Probably right about the third dot. If you have a fourth fourth dot, you probably want to find a new notation. Okay, we know how to do cross product. So the V cross A, that's not a problem. We know how to compute uh, V is the derivative of R, A is the double derivative of R, just regular the T derivative. So they're easy to compute. Well, at least straightforward. We had a product rule that was a little tricky. What in the world are all of these here? Derivatives. Those are all derivatives. So you have to know with respect to what. Uh, these will all be T derivatives. So here, X dot is x prime, which of course we mean d d t x. So <coughs> now just to warn you, the x in the bottom is a cross product, not the x variable. <coughs> so we got to stop here. Uh, so what you're basically doing, the first row right here is the velocity, the next row is the acceleration, and what's the last row called? Jerk. Oh, very good, it's called jerk. So you're just writing the x, y, z components, x, y, z, x, y, z, of the velocity, acceleration, and jerk, right there. Is that the same thing as uh, torque as well? Like, 
would you 